Hey everybody, and Tony here with a review of Caro Diario, which was shown at the Kino Babylon. This is also known in English as Dear Diary and was made back in 1993 in Italy and was directed, written, produced, and starred Nani Moretti. And alongside him were Renato Carpentieri and guest appearances by Jennifer Beals and Alexander Rockwell. Now, what more can I say about the country of Italy? I really love it with a passion. Aside from being the country that has a lot of my favorite operas, ranging from the Bel Canto period all the way up to Verismo, and even way, way back into the times of Monte Monteverdi, I also love the fact that it also had some very well-known films, like the Bicycle, the Bicycle Thieves, and even... Like one of my favorite films of all time, even though it's kind of a guilty pleasure for me, Pinocchio starring Roberto Benigni. Now, this country has also produced a lot of very well-known Italian filmmakers like Federico Fellini and Pier Paolo Pasolini. Not to mention it's also produced such very well-known actors and actresses like Gina Lolo Labrigida, Sofia Loren, and Roberto Benigni, and of course, Nani Moretti. I even studied Italian filmmaking, or even the filmmakers and the films of Italy when I was in IAFT, and I definitely enjoyed the samples that were shown of the works of different Italian filmmakers. So I came into this film not knowing what this film was about, and from what I've researched, this was going to be an autobiographical film. And I wasn't so sure how was I going to go into this. Of course, usually with autobiographical films, they'd usually be quite dramatic and kind of meant to be taken seriously. But when I went in, of course there were some serious moments, but I definitely had such a blast with this film. This film was... Funny, it was heartwarming, and even though it had some serious moments here and there, I definitely enjoyed everything about this film. So let's find, find out why I really enjoy it and why I feel so fond about this film. From the story, to the cinematography, music, characters, and acting. So this story follows the autobiographical tale of Nani Moretti, of how he deals with everyday life in the city or even in the island. Now, this movie is divided into three parts. The first part involves Moretti with his Vespa going around the city and like making critiques about American films, like one film, which is, let's see right here. Ah, Henry, Portrait of a Serial Killer and even having the chance to meet Jennifer Beals, who he pretty much idolized in her role in Flashdance. And with this part, he also states that he really wants to be a dancer as well, aside from like his passion of filmmaking. So you really do see how much of a quirky character he grows up to be in this scene and throughout his many adventures on his Vespa. The second part involves him going into different Italian islands, specifically in Salina, alongside a man by the name of Gerardo. Now, he starts off rather, rather closed about the world, and even though he is a scholar, but when he gets exposed to telenovelas, he completely feels rather hooked about, well, not missing any new episode of The Bold and the Beautiful. And not to mention the biggest highlight in this part was when Gerardo finds out that there is no electricity, no television, no telephone, no nothing. He completely scrambles out of the house and hops on the boat screaming like a maniac. And I was really finding myself laughing my butt off. I mean, that part was just the most enjoyable that I ended up getting I mean, it was just so enjoyable. It was just a lot of fun just watching Gerardo, who's usually so composed, 
just flip out and finding out, oh my gosh, she's going to miss what's going to happen in The Bold and the Beautiful. He just runs to that boat and then, well, that right there was comedy gold. And then the third part involves uh, Moretti getting himself some type of disease as he's been complaining about itches and a lot of discomforts that he has in the night. And now this is also based on what actually happened to him in real life. He has to go through a lot of doctors, a lot of physicians, a lot of dermatologists to see what on earth is up. Giving him a lot of prescriptions after prescription after prescription, only to find out that his condition doesn't really feel that cured or even that better at this point. So from what I could really see in the story, this is definitely a quirky yet very heartwarming, heartwarming tale of a man who is going through life and how he is as a person and getting himself into a lot of quirks and a lot of worldly events and even when it comes to his field in filmmaking and even going through a lot of crazy stuff here and there. So I really enjoyed the ride from beginning to end. And I probably would have loved to see a lot more. The cinematography I thought was just really well done. There were no like moments in which it had to be too flashy. It was just simple yet sweet. And I really enjoyed just how everything seemed to move along. There were no moments where I felt like it was being all ragtag. But it was just smooth, well done, well paced. And I thought it was just really excellent all around. Now the music in this film composes of different types of music, usually in the forms of pop ballads and some rock music, and you'll get your occasional classical, but they're mostly full of like pop ballads and a little bit of rock music. And there are even some still moments in the film as well. I especially love the closing song in the credits. I thought it was just the biggest highlight for me. Not to mention, this film also had some, some show tunes as well from a very popular showgirl during the, I would say, 50s or 60s. And I really enjoyed the music as well. I really felt like it really heightened the film of being quirky, yet be being very realistic and being very relatable. Now, talking about the characters, in Dear Diary is like talking about uh, Mani, excuse me, Nani Moretti. His journey throughout the film, even though to some people you might think, oh, it's going to be kind of boring or it might be mundane, he actually makes the mundane even exciting and even a lot more worthwhile to see. You could really see that he definitely has a personality that is not like any other person. He's unique in his own way. That's what makes him great, not only as a character, but also as a human being. He's someone I could easily relate to from beginning to end. He's a character that has a lot of personality and has a lot of spunk and has a lot of life, no matter what he does. He's witty. He can be sarcastic. He can be ironic at times. Yeah, he's so full of life and personality that I find myself feeling very entertained by this character every single time. And not to mention his, like, one-time friend, which we only see for one part of the film, Gerardo, he is actually kind of entertaining as well. He does start out kind of stoic and rather, rather someone who is the straight man. But once he gets exposed to telenovelas, oh boy, does he definitely find himself like, well, rooting for every character on the telenovela, like the characters from Bold and the Beautiful. Not to mention his one final scene, I thought was just so hilarious. And of course there are other characters, like the couples with just only one child, and they practically let their children really, like, um, get the upper hand from their parents. And not to mention the one-time appearance of Jennifer Beals alongside Alexander Rockwell. I thought was just 
I thought it was just a moment of brilliance found in this film. So overall, I definitely felt like the characters were quirky, relatable, and pretty much real. Not to mention the acting was very superb. I mean, you have Nani Moretti playing himself. From what I could see, he really had a ball making this film. Oh, sure, I'm sure there were also tough times he had to go through, like all the production-y stuff and all the stuff behind the camera and even balancing a lot of acting with directing and trying to find out what scene passes through next. But I could really tell that despite the challenges, he welcomes them and he really makes it his own. He has a very, very strong presence on screen that is so impossible to turn away that once you see him on screen, you can't help but feel like you are being part of his ride and you really enjoy that ride and you feel like this is more than just an odyssey. You're seeing a guy who is quirky, who is relatable, and who's just a lot of fun to see every time on screen. Not to mention with Renato Carpentieri's acting as Gerardo, I thought he was a well-done actor as well. He really nailed his part very well. Jennifer Beals and Alexander Rockwell's cameos, I thought were pretty much the stuff of legends. And not to mention her dialogue between her and Moretti, I thought was just really well done. So overall, I had a huge ball with this film. This film managed to be funny, it managed to be heartwarming, and it managed to be quite relatable. It's no wonder why this film won an award for Best Director at the Cannes Film Festival back in 1994. And was also, well, nominated for the Golden Palm. So you could really tell this film has a lot of merits. So if you haven't caught it yet, I highly suggest you check out Caro Diario or Dear Diary starring Nani Moretti. With that said, I give this film a 5 out of 5 stars. It is definitely worthwhile watching. You will never be disappointed. You will never be bored by this film. Everything about it just is so full of win. It's humorous. It's touching. And it just makes you have a ball. Well, that's all for now. Be sure to tune in later where I review the 2015 documentary film Azuland. So until then, see you later everybody.